Hi girls, this is Miss Madison. So I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit today about why census data is so important and what it's used for in the House of Representatives. Um, so this is from the, the 2010 census, what we're looking at right now, and I'm gonna use it to kind of explain why the census is so important and why it's important to count everybody in your household. So census data is taken and they take the population data, which the population is the total number of people living in a state. They take that population data and they use that to determine how many representatives each state gets in the US House of Representatives, which is part of our legislative branch of government. So the House of Representatives deals with lawmaking, um, passing and rejecting laws and things like that. But they get their representation from our census data. So it's really important that we fill it out so we know that everybody's counted. And the reason they break it up this way is so that um, states that have more people have more representation because the laws that they pass or reject are going to be affecting more people in that state. Uh, and it's done by population, so number of people rather than land mass. Um, so if you look at this map right here, um, you know, you can see that states like Montana and Wyoming only have one representative because they have a smaller population. Kentucky has six, so we have a pretty decently sized population. Uh, when you look at California, they have 53 because they have a huge population. And when you look at Texas, they have 36 because they have a pretty big population too. So uh, you can also see that this is a color-coded map. So if you look right along here where my mouse is pointing, you can see that it explains the color coding. Um, and I'm just gonna explain it really si simply for you all. So any state that is a dark blue or a medium blue uh, gained four seats if it's dark blue and two if it's light blue. So gaining four seats means they get four more representatives in the House of Representatives. Gaining two seats means they get two more. And this is just in 2010. So you can see that two states uh, Texas and Florida gained two or four representatives. Um, several, about six, gained one seat. That's the teal kind of light blue. So that's Georgia, South Carolina, Arizona, Utah, Nevada. They gained two. And uh, a lot of states had no change because their population stayed steady. But then if you look at the states in green, that means they actually lost seats. So people moved away from those states. And it's important that we keep that uh, data up to date because populations are changing all the time. Um, so, now that you know a little bit about how populations work, I'm going to bring you to our activity to go along with this. Okay, so now that we know how the House of Representatives works, we're going to do a fun little, almost kind of an art activity, where we're going to build our own little neighborhood of representatives. So, you're going to start by drawing your house, which is what I did here, and inside your house you're going to write the number of people that live with you. So I've got three people that live with me, so I'm going to put a three. Uh, I'll leave it up to you whether or not you want to count your pets, but I've got three people in my house. Then I'm going to think of a friend, and one of my friends, they also have three people in their house. So I drew their house, and I put a three in their house. And then you're going to keep going for as many people as you want to add to your little neighborhood. So I'm going to draw a couple more people in my neighborhood. Okay, so this is my little neighborhood, um, and you can see that each house kind of has different numbers in it depending on the number of people. So we're going to use that number to determine how many representatives each house gets in our neighborhood house of representatives. All right, so hopefully you can read my little chart here, but if you can't, I'll explain it to you. So if you have one person in the house, then you get one representative. If you have two people in the house, you get two representatives. And then after that, for every two people you add to the house, that's one more representative. So if two people means two representatives, four people would add one more representative. So for every two people you add to your house after one person, that adds a representative. So I'm going to take another color. You can use the same color, but I'm going to grab another color, and I'm going to write the number of representatives in the roof of my house. All right, so this house has two, this one has two, this one has two, this has three, and this one has four. And I will um, have a picture of this with my post too, just so that you can keep an eye on it and you can look at it in case you get confused. All right, once you have your little neighborhood like this, I want you to think about something that you would want to change in your community if you were a congresswoman. 
So I think that in my community, the roads flood really easily. So that'd be something I'd want to change. And you're going to write that below all your little houses. And once you've written your little message of change, you've completed your little census activity. So now you know how the House of Representatives works. You should know what a population is and how we measure it. And you should know why it's important that we count everybody in the census. Um, most importantly, though, you should have an idea of what you can change in a community and uh, just how representation is spread in the House of Representatives across the United States. So I hope you all enjoyed this, and I encourage you to decorate these as much as you want. You can add little flowers and street paths or whatever you want to them. So yeah, you should definitely let us know what you would change and show us pictures of your little communities. Bye!